Today, we are going to unbag my new vintage sewing machine together. In this video today, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the things that I look for when shopping for a sewing machine. I'm going to show you the outside of the sewing machine, the insides of the sewing machine, and then I'm going to thread the machine and we're going to find out if it actually works or if it's going to need some servicing. <laughs> A couple of days ago, a gear inside my sewing machine broke. Oh, sh <sighs> This is the third sewing machine that I have ever owned. And while it is super heartbreaking, I'm also kind of glad that it happened. It is an abandoned machine that my husband picked up and kept for me even before I moved to Texas. But now that I've been living here for close to three years and I'm feeling more settled and more well-adjusted, I feel like it's time for me to move on and actually own a sewing machine that I picked for myself. And so even though it's only been a few days, I already got a new sewing machine. And today we are going to unbag my new vintage sewing machine together. And without further ado, I present you the Genie. This is a vintage sewing machine from the 1970s and it was marketed as a lightweight portable sewing machine that you can supposedly take everywhere with you. Okay, first impression, I don't know about the claim of being lightweight because the machine actually feels heavier than my previous Singer. I definitely won't be looking this carefree while walking with this little tanker. However, this machine is definitely built to be portable because it comes with a machine cover that isn't just just a box that you put the machine in, but the machine and the cover nest together nicely like Lego. I had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how the cover comes off and then I realized it actually slides off nicely like this. Genius! Or I guess I should say genie? I am really impressed with the design of the cover. It comes with compartments for storing the pedal foot and everything else that comes with the machine, which means that if I ever wanted to take this machine with me to sew somewhere, I don't know where, I can just have almost everything that I need packed together with the sewing machine. And that's super convenient. The foot pedal has got barely any scuffs at all, which makes me wonder if the machine was even ever used. There's no bent prongs, no rust on the prongs and the plastic is not brittle, there's no exposed wire. These are all really good things because it means I'm gonna feel pretty safe and confident about plugging this machine and powering it up later. There is also the original instruction manual that comes without any tears or dog ears and a little vinyl bag for the sewing machine accessories. Everything is in such good condition. Now looking at the front of the machine, I immediately noticed a chip in the face plate of the machine, which is kind of disappointing. I didn't expect this um, and I probably did not study the listing photos enough in my excitement and I only have myself to blame, but despite the chip, isn't the groovy floral design just so adorable? I am so excited to have a sewing machine that actually reflects my style and my personal personality now. All the knobs and switches slide pretty easily, which is another good sign. The wheel also brings the needle up and down nicely, so things are looking pretty good. So this is just my personal evaluation. I guess I've got one moderate cosmetic flaw here and a few like cuts and bumps around the exterior of the sewing machine. But I guess for a sewing machine that was actually marketed as a quote unquote portable sewing machine and one that is at least 50 years old, I can't be too picky. So the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is take off the cover and and then take a peek inside, give it a good clean, remove big chunks of lint and give it a good oiling session and then we're gonna power it up. Now this is where I had a little bit of trouble with the sewing machine. I was able to take the side cover off pretty easily, but the top cover felt impossible to remove. I took off all the screws on the outside of the machine, but I was still unable to take the cover off easily. And of course this machine is too cute and precious for me to try brute force on it. Looking at the instruction manual um, for the page that talks about cleaning and oiling the sewing machine, it only talks about this portion of the sewing machine. And looking at the condition of this portion of the sewing machine, it is 
pretty darn clean so i guess i'm not gonna be too worried about lint and whatnot here i guess it's the beauty of having like a cover that is designed and built so beautifully one that actually goes so nicely with the sewing machine it really protects it from the environmental dust and dirt and whatnot so i'm just gonna go ahead and oil this section of the sewing machine and then just give it a go and see where it goes so i gave the outside of the machine a good clean with the microfiber cloth then i removed some residual lint from the bobbin compartment which means i take back what i said earlier this machine hasn't been used and then finally i lubricated some of the parts with my triflow as usual following the steps outlined in the instruction manual. Before plugging the machine in, I made sure I put in a new clean sewing needle. Over here, I'm just using the basic kind of all-purpose sewing thread and... The moment of truth. The first row of stitches I tried on the sewing machine was so horrible. Okay, so I was really worried for a second. And then I realized I actually didn't thread the upper thread correctly. So I am doing it for the second time. And hopefully this is going to solve the issue of the nesting on the underside of the fabric. Same fabric, same needle, same thread, just a different side of the fabric. Let's give it a go. Okay, I can tell the stitches are definitely a lot more even. Okay, cool. I'm gonna try the back stitch as well. I think this is it. Yes. Let's take a look. Definitely need to adjust the tension of the thread because I can see the upper thread on the underside. And that's what I usually do with every new project anyway. It takes a little bit of trial and error to figure out the best um, thread tension. Let me just try it at number four. And it's basically perfect. I don't feel my table shaking. It is very sturdy. See, this is a better tension. Nope, still not great. Surprise, surprise, the second time that I re-threaded the upper thread was still incorrect. I didn't realize that I actually have to draw the thread over the top of the tension dial. But even after correcting that mistake, I'm still having issues with the upper thread tension. It just seems a little bit too tight. Anyway, since this video is just supposed to be like a first impression sort of a thing, I decided that I am going to have to spend some time figuring out what to do with the thread tension after this video. Now, when it comes to buying a new sewing machine, regardless of whether it's vintage or modern, if the goal for me is for the machine to be a basic everyday sort of a machine, I only just have two criteria for the sewing machine. Number one, does it have a zigzag stitch function? And number two, can it sew a four-step buttonhole? And this vintage sewing machine right here fulfills just one of the criteria. Hear me out. Despite the fact that I will actually have to take more time fiddling with the settings just to get each buttonhole right, I think I'm at the point in my sewing journey where the process is just as important, if not more important than the outcome of the sewing. Of course, sometimes I still get impatient, but this is just gonna be a good reminder for me to, you know, stop and smell the flowers and enjoy the process.
Also, this vintage sewing machine not only has just a zigzag stitch function, it has an elastic zigzag stitch function and a multi-step zigzag stitch function. One of the things that I really love about vintage sewing machines and their instruction manuals is that they are a true representation of their times. Now, sewing with stretchy double knits was all the rage in the 1970s. So of course, this sewing machine that came out in the 1970s would have the stitch functions to perfectly facilitate that and also there's a page in the instruction manual that even shares some sewing tips on sewing with faux fur fabrics and i don't think that's something that you see very often in instruction manuals overall i'm super happy with my purchase and i'm really excited about sewing some vintage 1970s sewing pattern with my new vintage 1970s sewing machine thank you so much for watching this video on my first impression of my new vintage sewing machine i hope you have enjoyed unboxing and exploring this new vintage sewing machine with me and if you want to see more of this sewing machine in action then definitely subscribe to my channel because this is going to be my new go-to basic sewing machine after I figure out the thread tension thing I will see you in the next one bye